Hi, I'd like to talk about a review article addressing hepatotoxicity of monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. Every once in a while, I'll have someone uh, comment or, or come up with a concern, and they'll throw me a research paper that you know has them alarmed. And this is one such paper, so I want to evaluate it for you, kind of look at it, take it apart, and find out it, how much... Where, what's the concern? This particular review article came out in January of 2018 in the Archives of Toxicology, and um, I'll, I'll give you the link there if you really want to go chase it down. The abstract reads, and I'll, I'll read this for you, but the abstract uh, reads in such a way that people reading abstracts and not, not looking necessarily looking at understanding the whole body of literature, but if you read the abstract, you'll come away with a concern that, oh my gosh, essential oils uh, and, and, and uh, terpenes, monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes are hepatotoxic. They're killing people's livers and people are dying right and left from liver failure associated with using essential oils. That's not true, but, but you know, let's, so, so let's keep our heads a little bit and, and let me analyze this. The abstract reads, Okay, first of all, the title, Hepatotoxicity of Monoterpenes and Sesquiterpenes. Hepatotoxicity means toxicity to the liver, and then monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes. Uh, monoterpene is a, a compound that's made of two isoprene units, and a sesquiterpene is made up of three isoprene units. Just to give you a context, there are thousands of different, thousands of different monoterpene compounds. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many sesquiterpenes, but I would guess they're also in the thousands of different sesquiterpenes. Okay, so we're talking about a huge, diverse class of compounds in essential oils and plants in general. Okay, so if you eat food, you're eating monoterpenes. Okay, um, certainly if you eat any citrus oils, uh, any citrus, uh, uh, you know, orange and lemon juice. You know, you have limonene in the juice, okay? So, you know, we, so let's, again. Okay, so I'm gonna read the abstract just to give you a flavor of where the authors are coming from. Public interest in natural therapies has increased significantly over the past, over past decades. Herbs and herbal products are extensively consumed worldwide and they are generally considered as safe. However, this may not always be true as many cases of herb-induced liver injury are reported every year. And we look and look into the details of those herb-induced liver injury stories and reports. I mean, a lot of times these are from... Anyway, uh, I'm not going to address that. Let, let's move on. The liver is a frequent target of to target toxicity, uh, uh, target tissue of toxicity from all classes of toxicants as liver structure and function predispose it to high sensitivity to xenobiotics. The present review, the present review is focused on the hepatotoxicity, hepatotoxic properties of monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes, plant secondary metabolites that represent the major uh, components of essential oils widely used in folk medicine, pharmaceutical industry, and cosmetics. Most of these terpenes easily enter the human body by oral absorption, penetration through the skin, or inhalation, leading to measurable blood concentrations. Several studies show that some monoterpenes, for example, uh, pulagone, pulago menthofuran, camphor, and limonene, and sesquiterpenes, for example, uh, zeterone, uh, germacrone, um, exhibit liver toxicity, Exhibit liver toxicity, which is mainly based on reactive metabolite formation, increased concentration of reactive oxygen species, and impaired antioxidant defense. There is a high probability that many other terpenes without... So now I'm, I'm, I'm already going, okay, what? There is a high probability that many other terpenes without significantly known uh, metabolism and effects in human liver could also exert hepatotoxicity. Sure, but what's the basis of that? especially terpenes that are important components of essential oils with proved, with proved hepatotoxicity should deserve more attention intensively. So in other words, this is a big fear, fear mongering. Oh my gosh, essential oils are gonna kill your liver. Um, what's the basis for this? Where do they go? Now, since this is a review article, it's a review article. It is not a primary research. They're not doing any lab research here. They are simply looking at the literature. Now, as a review article in essential oils, I've read I've read many review articles, and and just just to give you a, a perspective, Tisserand's book on safety of essential oils has over four thousand references, 
And on limonene alone, there's over 100 references. I counted 130 references in the text for just for limonene. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll come back to this in a minute. This article has 62 references. And the title suggests hepatotoxicity of all monoterpenes and all sesquiterpenes, which is absurd. Thousands of monoterpenes and thousands. So really the title of this paper should be, okay, if the authors are listening, which I'm sure they're not, um, the article of this review article, this should be a brief evaluation, a brief review of some monoterpenes and sesquiterpenes and their potential for hepatotoxicity. That, that's, that's the most that for me as a, as a PhD research, you know, uh, a PhD in cell biology, having read research and done research and written papers, that would be how I would word this, to be accurate about what this, what this review is. This is a brief review of select compounds with known, with known hepatotoxicity. Okay, now what's interesting is they include limonene, and that's probably the only reason that anyone is reading this paper, is because they included limonene as one of the monoterpenes that they're claiming has liver toxicity. And here's where it almost gets comical. But, but let me explain. Okay, so, so they, they're dealing with pulegone. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. P-U-L-E-G-O-N-E, -E, pulegone, menthofuran, camphor, and limonene. These are, th that's it, they're, they're, they're looking at four, four monoterpenes, okay? And so to verify that, I look at the, at the actual, so again, they're not doing any research, they're just doing literature reviews. So when I look at the specifics of the literature review, I come up with most of the interest or the focus is on pennyroyal oil and pulegone, okay? Um, and pennyroyal oil, out of the 62 references, I wrote this out here, let me see. Out of the 62 references, 11 of them are, darn it, I'm getting to my page, 11 of them are on pennyroyal oil. Well, who uses pennyroyal oil? It, it's like 70% pulegone, okay? We don't even sell it, right? I mean, people don't use pennyroyal oil. Not that it's absolutely, uh, you know, so toxic you wouldn't use it. It's not, um, but it, it's, you know, it's just, it's not in use. So the other, I mean, eight more references on, on a, 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 a weed called Mexican Devil, like no one ever uses that. Um, five references on menthofuran, which, uh, which actually menthol, menthofuran is a compound that's in peppermint oil. So, you know, okay, how toxic can that be? Isolated and, sh and, and shot into, into rats at high dosages definitely shows some liver toxicity. And then limonene, three references on limonene. So three references on limonene compared to 130 in Tisserand on limonene alone. Do you think this is a fair literature review of limonene? Ironically, almost comically, one of the three references actually show, talks about how limonene protects the liver, which is what other research shows, limonene protects the liver. So how do we come up with the statement that limonene is hepatotoxic? And certainly they're, they're stating it so confidently. They're including it. They're lumping it in with, with uh, pulegone, uh, camphor, and, and menthofuran, which it doesn't deserve any such comparison, okay? And it's because of one study, which I read in, in its entirety, one study done on rats. And, and what's interesting when I go to Tisserand, and what I mean by Tisserand is this tome here, Essential, the uh, Essential Oil Safety, second edition by Robert Tisserand and Rodney Young. His material is, is very thoroughly done. Um, I often think his cautionary advice is over, he's over cautious uh, in, in a lot of his advice. I mean, but that's okay. I mean, safety, you know, better to be safe than, than sorry down the line. And so I, I, like, I like reading him because he's, I know that if he's saying it's safe, it's pretty darn safe. And um, like I said, he's got a long write-up on limonene and nowhere in here is it referencing hepatotoxicity. Okay, so it does refer to nephrotoxicity, which is the toxicity to the kidneys. And he has this to say, and, and this is interesting because it's relevant because the study that was done that these 
people reference. The one study on, on limonene toxicity to the liver is in Windstar, male Windstar rats. Listen to this. Limonene may be nephrotoxic to male Windstar rats, but only at excessive oral doses. In adult male rats, limonene caused renal accumulation, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then he goes, this nephrotic, nephrotoxic effect is specific to male rats and so conspicuously absent in studies on humans and other mammals, evidence that no related caution is required in using limonene-rich essential oils. So regarding this, this kidney toxicity, this is an anomaly. This, this male Windstar rat is sensitive to limonene. Well, what a shock. It's also liver toxic. It, it's sensitive in the liver as well as in the kidneys. So there's, there's, it's such an outlier piece of, of data to include it in a, a review article on hepatotoxicity of, of monoterpenes is almost deliberately misleading. Okay. So for me, I, I feel totally confident utterly dismissing this review article as I, I don't know. I don't know where they're getting it. I don't know what they're getting at here. Um, when I take the information and I compare it back to this, I haven't changed not one I, one concern. Nothing has changed for me. Limonene is a very, very safe compound. If anything, it shows hepatoprotection, not hepatotoxicity. And uh, the other compounds in there that, uh, that are discussed according to Tisseran, aren't even that bad, okay? So in other words, you know, the, the menthol furan is in peppermint oil, okay? And it, what, it, what it amounts to is that the safe dose of peppermint oil for menthol furan and pulagone are somewhere around 10 to 20 drops a day internal use. Every day, day in and day out, every day would be completely safe. Now, I personally, I don't take that much oil, uh, and I certainly don't do it every day, all day, you know, every day. For, so it's it's i think the applications at some point become um the concerns for liver toxicity become somewhat somewhat overblown and certainly this review article is is almost designed or worded either it's just it's worded poorly or it's designed deliberately for clickbait to get people to to look at this article and start downloading it etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so that's my analysis of this particular review article um, overstated, overrepresented, under under uh, referenced, um, very poor. I mean, to even talk about limonene with three references as a review article, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, it would deserve at least uh, you know 10 or 15 re uh, references in there, and would be easy to find those. And just just pick up Tisserand's book for crying out loud if you want to know safety data on essential oils and, and limonene. Okay, so I, I don't know. That's my analysis of it. I think you can rest easy uh, that essential oils are pretty darn safe. I personally follow Kurt Schnabel's advice and, and, and approach that essential oils are safe enough to play with. You know, you can play around with essential oils, get to know them, get to know how they work in your body, but make sure they're pure. That's, I mean, you know, I've, I, you, I've, have, I've had other comments about, about this. The, the purity is so important. The, the contaminants from the manufacture of these compounds is far scarier than anything the plant produces. Okay, so don't mess around with synthetic oils. They're very dangerous. Real oils that come from plants, we're okay to play around with them. Of course, be watching out for your own body and tendencies and detox reactions, etc. Okay, happy wellness, one day at a time.